Hi everyone. I'm sure you watched the case study that I put up earlier uh, regarding communications on vessels and how it can lead to accidents. Now in my previous video, I just uh, presented the case study and in today's video, I'll uh, do the analysis and I'll provide you with my analysis and that will also help you to analyze a similar case studies if you read case studies for your examinations or uh, if uh, you can learn something from this case study and make sure that this doesn't happen on your ship in future. So let's get started here. Uh, the case study started in a Swiss Canal when a vessel was transiting with pilot on board and uh, she was supposed to be navigating along the central line of the channel. However, as she drifted away from the central line, the pilots and the bridge team used the corrective helm and engines to counter it. By this time, the vessel had swung considerably and it neared another bank on the opposite side. Because of this close proximity to the other bank on the opposite side, the stern of the vessel brushed and contacted with rocky bottom. So here, before I go into the next slide, I want to provide you with some analysis. Uh, here, the first thing that you have to note is that uh, although there was a pilot on board, there was a bridge team on board, and they still allowed the vessel to drift away from the center line. One might argue that yes, vessels do not stick to the center line, they do drift away, and I agree with you. But before they start to drift away, uh, and you can start, of course, using corrective helm and engines to counter it. You should be keeping it in the center line if that's the intention. But here the vessel swung considerably. So that means not only it drifted out of the center line, it drifted away for a long enough time that the vessel swung considerably onto the other side when the corrective helm was off, when applied. Now, when the corrective helm was applied, the vessel didn't only come to the center line, but it swung away to the opposite side. Now, uh, this was, I think, a failure on the bridge team. Uh, on the part of the bridge team. They should have been monitoring the helm. They should have been monitoring the ship's position. They should have been monitoring uh, as soon as the vessel was starting to drift from the center line, they should have applied the corrective helm. And if the vessel was starting to swing, they should have applied the helm in a such a way that the vessel doesn't develop momentum and go on to the other side. That is the role of a handsman, the officer on watch and the pilot as well, keeping the vessel on the intended track especially when it involves uh, such narrow channels which uh, like Suez Canal or it could be some narrow channels at sea and when you have to restrict yourself to a certain narrow channel this is your job on the ship so a learning lesson a lesson that you can learn from here is that uh, uh, of course vessels are not like cars they cannot be on one track they cannot be on the intended track exactly but you have to make sure that you arrest the momentum of the ship when the vessel is drifting away either from the center line or when you're trying to bring it to the center line it should not drift away on the opposite side excessively because the more helm you use it's putting more load on the steering gear more fuel is being used you should endeavor you should try to keep the vessel uh, around the center line so that it doesn't drift away or it doesn't swing on the opposite sides because it consumes more fuel oil you're wasting more time uh, and over a period of time it can catch up with the vessels eta it can affect the vessels uh, estimated time of arrival to the next port all right now when it near to the opposite bank the stern of the vessel got so close that it brushed and contacted with the rocky bottom. Now here, of course, the officers should have been monitoring uh, how close it is and why can't they find out when it brushed with the rocky bottom? Uh, was the depth being monitored or not? If the depth was being monitored, how come the vessel got so close that it brushed away? So that means uh, uh, maybe parallel indexing was not being carried out. Maybe they didn't have the sectors laid out beyond which the vessel may go into danger. So Swiss Canal Transit, if you have been to Swiss Canal, of course you have enough room, uh, not enough room, but I should say that uh, the vessel, even if it's a deep draft vessel, uh, you can transit the canal smoothly or safely. Now, but here they allowed the vessel to go so um, uh, much into the shallow patch that it, the stern of the vessel brushed against the rocky bottom. Now that should not have been allowed. Uh, if you are monitoring the uh, depths or you know about the shallow depths, then you should not have allowed the vessel to go into that kind of a patch. So there was a failure of communication here in the bridge team because the bridge team was not communicating with one another or maybe uh, roles and uh, were not uh, delineated, uh, roles were not uh, allotted to the person. Uh, there was a bridge team present, but people were probably not doing their job because if there's a pilot present, the officers are present, the hemsman, the lookout, everyone is present. Uh, this uh, case should not have happened. This is clearly a, a failure in communication. Now let's go to the second slide where a heavy thud was heard and vibrations were felt on the wheelhouse as well as engine room. Now the speed of the vessel naturally dropped 
but it picked up again. All the ship staff noticed the vibrations. The engine room called up the bridge to confirm if everything was in order. Both the officers on watch, so there were two officers on watch along with the pilot, confirmed with the pilot if everything was in order, to which the pilot of course responded affirmatively. So the pilot told them that there is no problem, everything is fine, it's just vibrations. The vessel picked up speed again and resumed the canal transit. Now again you can see here there is a, a failure in communication. The first failure in communication is when everyone noticed the vibrations and of course here the case study doesn't tell you what the master did or not. Uh, ideally the officers should have communicated to the master or let's assume the master called up the bridge, the officers asked the pilot and they told the engine room and the master that the pilot says everything is fine. They should not have taken the pilot's word uh, uh, for granted. The pilot is of course doing his job and uh, they, he would not like to bear any responsibilities of any damages that occurs to the ship due to his actions. So naturally uh, when you have experienced the vibrations being an experienced sailor or being sailors on board or being seafarers being officers on the bridge you should have confirmed you should have confirmed through either visual inspections or um, any other means especially you can use the echo sounder to see how much was the uh, UKC or the undercut clearance when the vessel was passing a certain area but uh, just taking the pilot's word for granted and the master not doing anything or the engine room also believing that everything is fine uh, no inspections being carried out uh, no one being sent for a round to see if there is any flooding in any of the compartments uh, that was a failure in communication all right so immediately action should have been taken and uh, the vessel continued to proceed and that was uh, uh, that was the problem that was where the problem lied probably the vessel should have been um, uh, slowed down or action should have been taken in terms of inspection uh, pilots what should not have been taken for granted that was a failure of communication again so engine room staff should have started inspecting the engine room compartments the deck staff should have started inspecting the cargo holds the ballast tanks uh, to see if any flooding or any hole or any damage has taken place to the ship's hull. Then of course the senior most officer on watch neither called master nor discussed it later on with him. Now of course here we are saying that the officer should on, on watch should have called master but uh, also the master should have called the officer and asked what is going on. However below the waterline the forward part of the hull suffered damages and thus her strength was reduced considerably in the area of impact. Now, the surprising thing here is that no one went and inspected the area of damage or the possible area of damage or in fact the whole ship to see if any damages have occurred or not. Uh, the fact that it went beyond uh, uh, the damages and uh, then deformation was there but below the waterline that is even more dangerous. Uh, the vessel crossed the canal in the, after the vibrations were experienced and uh, there was some suspicion. The vessel proceeded kept going without any inspections being carried out and uh, while she was loading in load port a large third was heard. Again, an officer on watch noticed that water is rushing into the ballast tanks number one, two and three on both side, which is a very dangerous situation, especially when you have water rushing in on one side, there's a large probability of the vessel uh, developing an angle of load or even capsizing or developing a large list, which will be difficult to control with cargo or ballast. So again, there was a failure of communication here. Like I said, the senior most officer failed to call the master or discuss it later or even carry out inspections before the loading start. They should have carried out inspections, especially when they were in port, they could have carried out inspections. Even on the seaside, they could have lowered the live boat and carried out inspection. Without carrying on inspections, uh, they should not have allowed the cargo operations to begin. So again, there was a failure in the communication. So naturally the last slide said that the vessel um, because uh, the loading was being carried out the vessel was continuing being subjected to stresses and the damage in the deformed part of the hull the fatigued part of the hull which must have rubbed against the rocky bottom uh, became weak crumbled and gave away now this is very important lessons here to learn for all of us here as the seafarers and mariners that uh, you cannot uh, um, just take people's word for granted or unless you have visually inspected visually checked you must cross check it you must follow the proper procedures even if you suspect something. Uh, so to, today of course in this case of course it was a, a massive uh, vibration that was felt which should have caused a large enough suspicion for the mariners and seafarers to go and inspect. But tomorrow even if there are small suspicions you could think that there is a false fire alarm. You could think about any other thing uh, that uh, you may smell smoke from some compartment. Uh, you may see oil a small oil leak from uh, on deck. So that doesn't mean that you don't check. You must always check. Make sure that you have done your adequate checks and you have carried out the inspections because tomorrow when something goes wrong in the court of law, you will be asked questions about what did you do once you um, 
suspected something so in this case of course the master of the officers uh, the pilot they will all be in trouble because in the court of law they will definitely be asked that when vibrations were felt why weren't no inspections carried out why was only the pilots were trusted that everything is fine why didn't the engine room staff carry out inspections why didn't the deck staff carry out inspections why weren't the ballast tanks the cargo holds inspected before the loading commenced to ensure that the vessel is structurally sound so this is how you have to uh, analyze case studies or this is how you have to look at the case study or this is what you can learn from this case study uh, because uh, the main purpose of the case study is for you guys to learn uh, lessons and making sure that uh, similar occurrences do not occur on your ship tomorrow when you are the officer on the ship. So I will keep it short here. I will stop the video now. Let me know in your comments uh, what you think or how did you go about analyzing what else you think went wrong here and what else should have been done on this ship to prevent this accident from occurring. All the best guys and thank you for watching. Bye.